to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala, your source for the uncensored truth regarding the human, extraterrestrial, global, and political agenda. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel. And now, here is Dr. Michael Sala. On March 18, news emerged of a heat wave in East Antarctica, the epicenter of which was the Vostok region that sits atop a mysterious lake two miles under the ice sheet. Scientists are baffled by the heat surge of more than 70 degrees above average temperatures and are seeking answers. A likely explanation comes from two sources who say an ancient ark is buried under the ice sheet in the Vostok region and its activation is heating up East Antarctica. The Washington Post was the first to reveal the heat wave in East Antarctica. In a story titled, It's 70 degrees warmer than normal in Eastern Antarctica, scientists are flabbergasted. This is what was reported. Quote, The average high temperature in Vostok, at the centre of the eastern ice sheet, is around minus 63, minus 53 Celsius, in March. But on Friday, the temperature leaped to zero, minus 17.7 Celsius, the warmest it's been there during March since record keeping began 65 years ago. It broke the previous monthly record by staggering 27 degrees, 15 Celsius. End quote. Antarctic scientists are baffled by the heat wave in late March since Antarctica is losing about 25 minutes of sunlight each day, according to what they told the Washington Post. Meteorologists reported a heat dome over East Antarctica and said, This is not something we've seen before. Significantly, the Washington Post reports that there has been notable melting of the ice sheet in the region. This takes me to the discovery of a large magnetic anomaly at one end of Lake Vostok, as first reported in the Antarctic Sun on February 4, 2001. The anomaly's size was 65 by 46 miles or 105 by 75 kilometers, according to scientific measurements. Veteran NASA researchers Richard Hoagland and Mike Barra soon after proposed the anomaly may in fact be a buried city. Since 2001, there has been multiple sources that claim they have visited or been briefed about an ancient city or large alien motherships buried under the ice sheets, either at Lake Vostok or other areas in Antarctica. What could be driving the heat wave and heat dome over East Antarctica? Is it connected to the magnetic anomaly at Lake Vostok, two miles under the ice sheet? While meteorologists struggle to give a conventional explanation, they admit to being baffled by what is happening. There is another non-conventional explanation for what is driving the heat wave in East Antarctica, a space arc buried under the Vostok region that has begun activating. On March 29, I was contacted by Jean-Charles Moyen, who is a French contactee and secret space program insider that I've interviewed previously for Exopolitics Today. Jean-Charles is a filmmaker working on the sequel to his first fiction-based-on-fact movie, South Shore Origin. In his email message, Jean-Charles reported a teleportation experience first to Ireland, where he met Elena Danan. He next went with her to a Galactic Federation of Worlds mothership in Earth orbit and finally travelled to Lake Vostok, Antarctica. Here is how he summarised it all. Quote, Monday, March 28, 3.33am. Here is what I experienced. Last night, I was working on South Shore Origin 2. I got up to lie down on the couch in my office because my head was spinning. Too much computer, probably. And all of a sudden, I felt myself go into the couch and I passed out. When I opened my eyes, I found myself in the path of the other time in Ireland. And I heard, remember, remember. And I saw the same scene again, but until the end without interruption. Elena was holding my hand and said, I'm going to introduce you to the family. And then I saw the next part. I felt tingling all over my body, exactly the same sensation as when you sleep on your arm and the blood comes back in it. You know, that scary tingling sensation. Suddenly I was up in a ship, in a big control room, with a huge view of space, and Elena was next to me, and she said to me, You saw, it's beautiful, the view. I like to come here. It relaxes me to see the earth like this. It calms me. And there in the middle stood Melanie, Jean-Charles' wife in a silver tight suit. Who said you were surprised to see me here, honey? 
Elena and I have known each other for a long time and we are friends. But I'll let you continue your visit and she teleported herself. And then someone came up behind us. I instantly felt his energy and the hairs on my arm stood up as if electrified. I turned around and saw a man in a uniform with shoulder pads, almond-shaped eyes of a very luminous lagoon colour and beautiful blonde hair that looked like an angel, as in the Bible. There was no flaw on his face. It was disturbing to see the perfection of his features. He smiled at me and I heard in my mind, relax my friend, you know who I am. And he came closer and put his fingers in a triangular shape on my forehead and temples and I found myself surrounded by translucent blue ice. I said, where are we? He told me, under Antarctica, precisely under the Lake Vostok, where there is an arc. And I turned around and Elena was there in a tight-fitting suit that pulsed a kind of bluish energy with heat to regulate your temperature. I had no suit, but I had the same bluish energy around me. And I said, but why are we here? And I heard, because you are all the keys to the awakening of humanity. And suddenly I felt myself being pulled backwards, as if I was falling into a hole. And I woke up with a start, with my heart pounding in my chest. It was precisely 3.33. End quote. After receiving Jean-Charles' startling information, I contacted Elena Denan to see if she or Thorhan had any information about Lake Vostok and what Jean-Charles had experienced. The response from Thorhan to my inquiry was stunning and gave critical information that explains the heat wave and melting ice in the Vostok region. Quote, Lake Vostok, March 29, 2022. The civilization who left technology under the melting ice of Antarctica wasn't from Nataru, Milky Way galaxy. There were ancient times when the climate of this planet was different, when the magnetic poles were located in a different place. The land was green and fertile and the climate was warm, in the land you call now Antarctica. An important colony was settled there. They were of the Patal. They lived in peace and prosperity. It was a great civilization told about in your ancient tales as a lost continent. In truth, it was never lost, but forgotten, under the ice, for a reason. They left gifts, large crafts, and structures in the subterranean web of heated caverns. The structures under Lake Vostok were known from a long time by your scientists, working in the secret programs. The Earth Alliance knew, and it was the bait to bring financial elites down to Antarctica for the last meeting. They never saw the arcs, they were never taken there. But this is another story. The Ark under Lake Vostok is part of a much larger structure of halls and temples. A powerful pyramid generator is also there. None could activate it. Yet. End quote. Thorhan appears to be describing an ancient civilization such as Atlantis, which has long been rumoured to be buried under the ice sheets after the last cataclysmic earth changes occurred 11,600 years ago. A book by researchers Rand Flemath and Rose Flemath, Atlantis Beneath the Ice, The Fate of the Lost Continent, published in 2012, presents compelling evidence for such a claim. In addition, Thorhen refers to recent meetings held in Antarctica where the Cabal, aka Deep State Leaders, secretly travelled to negotiate with the Earth Alliance and the Galactic Federation about their future. The cabal reneged on whatever deal was reached and continued to cause chaos on Earth as evidenced by current global events. Thorhan continued his update. Quote, Not only the Earth Alliance and the Nataru Alliance knew about it, but also the enemy. The Sakaar stormed and took the place under Vostok, hoping to crack the codes of this technology. They welcomed the humans of the Nazi group that you called the Fourth Reich to help decrypting this technology. Were you thinking that they accepted human colonies there in Antarctica for no reason? What do you think they were getting in exchange for technology and weapons? DNA. The Sakars knew DNA was the key to activate these power structures. But even though they looked into finding the right DNA frequency codes, they never succeeded to activate these structures. The Intergalactic Confederation has more than one safety lock on these structures, and what comes with DNA is consciousness. The body envelope and the inhabiting soul need to be of the same frequency and the person needs to be alive and conscious and know what to do, how to activate the commands and unlock the portals. You need the knowledge that goes with the tools. You cannot kill someone and only use their DNA sample because it needs to be inhabited by consciousness. 
by an original soul part of the cedars who have this knowledge. Bodies are also there in stasis and they were found a long time ago. But their genetic material isn't enough because the soul has gone and awaits to come back. Now the ice is melting to reveal in plain sight the secrets we liberated for you. End quote. I have earlier reported on my US Army source JP who has travelled to arcs on the moon and under the Atlantic Ocean where a multinational team drawn from the US, China and Russia has been researching the ancient arcs. JP confirmed that the arcs are activated by the DNA of a select number of individuals. Consequently, it is very plausible that the Draco reptilians, aka Sakaar, used the Nazis to get access to human DNA they could use to activate the arcs. In addition, JP has revealed that the activating arcs are releasing a tremendous amount of heat, quickly warming up the surrounding environment. In a voice communication received on March 29, Elena confirmed that she had been taken to Lake Vostok with Jean Charles in the early morning of the previous day. This is now the explanation why I wasn't allowed to remember this moment because it was meant that um, Jean Charles remembers. Um, I think it's a good strategy that they scattered uh, information, not always the same person, you know, I, I find it very good. Um, then there was a lot of uh, also um, um, holographic projection around Jean Charles to show him, uh, make him conf uh, confident and settled. They projected that his um, Melanie was there as well uh, to make him confident. But I was uh, really there and uh, with him and uh, I remember now. <laughs> but he was meant, the one meant to remember first because as Thorhan always says, remembering is activating. Um, so now he could confirm about Lake Vostok Elena's confirmation shows that the Galactic Federation is now taking at least two individuals to visit the space arcs, witness the contents and report their experiences to the world. In a follow-up message from Jean Charles on March 29, he explains being taken on a second trip to Lake Vostok earlier in the morning of that day. Quote, This night I found myself in the same place under Lake Vostok, but this time I was inside a structure. It was the R. Everything was purified inside. No screws, no bolts, nothing. It looked like tungsten, but translucent. I was in the center, and in the middle, there was a kind of sphere which turned very luminous. They would have said a ball of bluish plasma, which gave off a lot of heat by emitting a crystalline noise, and around was laid out in a geometrical form resembling a star, tubes in which there were beings in stasis. I approached one of the tubes and when I approached it reacted by lighting up as if my presence triggered it. I felt in connection with the material of the vessel. The structure seemed alive. I could see the appearance of the being in the tube. He was tall and his skin had bluish reflections. He was wearing a kind of midnight blue suit without any seams. There was a symbol on the suit representing a triangle with the constellation inside and I heard a voice coming out of nowhere saying to me, You have been chosen. It was the same sentence that the mantis being had said to me as a child when she put her paws on my shoulder, you remember, during the test of fear with the other children. Many of them had failed except me. Well, it was the same voice. I approached the tube and it lit up very brightly and I woke up suddenly and on the alarm clock it was 5.55. Jean-Charles' information matches what JP said he had encountered during his two trips to the submerged Atlantic space arc. He described a blue ball of liquid, or plasma, in one large room, which was a portal to other space arcs. In addition, he witnessed many crypt-like structures whose contents were not seen by JP, but he said he was briefed that they radiated friendly energy. In addition, in an upcoming update from Una, a representative of the 24 Cedar races, also known as the Intergalactic Confederation, it will be confirmed that the sleeping giants are starseeds currently incarnated on Earth. Elena plans to soon reveal this fascinating update. In conclusion, the experiences released by Jean-Charles Moyen and Elena Danan, when combined with the earlier revelations from JP, all suggest that an ancient arc is activating and warming up the Vostok region and the rest of East Antarctica. Furthermore, the ancient arc is almost certainly linked in some way to the large magnetic anomaly 
discovered at one corner of Lake Vostok back in 2001. The record temperatures in East Antarctica recently reported by the Washington Post suggest the heating up process caused by the activating arc is unstoppable. It therefore is only a matter of time before the world will be confronted by indisputable physical evidence of an ancient Atlantean civilization buried under Antarctica and the existence of large space arcs buried in Antarctica and other locations around the planet. What will be even more exciting for the general public and many readers in particular is the revelation that the sleeping giants in the space arcs are human star seeds currently living normal lives on Earth. These star seeds are destined to awaken to their DNA or soul connection to the hibernating crews of the activating space arcs through dreams, visions and eventually physical travel there as happened with both Jean-Charles Moyen and Elena Denard. This has been Dr. Michael Sala with Exopolitics Today. Please remember to like and subscribe to my podcast. Many thanks to Jean-Charles Moyen and Elena Denan for permission to publish their email communications. You can find more information about them in the description of this podcast. On April 9, I will be holding my next webinar on extraterrestrial cedars, space arcs and the Great Reveal, where I go into detail into the history of space arcs and the cedars and why their recent arrival is triggering the arcs activation, which in turn will lead to incredible revelations about humanity's origins and connections to extraterrestrial life.